On behalf of uh, the UNESCO Chair on Community Media, I'm uh, very happy to welcome all of you to the first of uh, two discussions on community radio in continental Europe as part of uh, the series Global Dialogues on Community Media in the post-pandemic world that uh, we have been hosting since June of this year. The series is supported by UNESCO South Asia Regional Office in New Delhi. And uh, for these specific European dialogues, we gratefully acknowledge the partnership of uh, the Community Media Forum of Europe, CMFE, and uh, AMARC Europe. Over the previous seven episodes, uh, community radio practitioners, uh, policy advocates, and activists from various regions of the world, including South Asia, Australia, the UK and Ireland, Eastern and Southern Africa, Western and Central Africa, Southeast Asia and the Pacific have shared their experiences and insights on the role played by community media, especially community radio in their respective regions. In many ways, European community radio, from what I could uh, study and see sometimes in person, emerged out of various social movements, including student rebellions, anti-race and anti-nuclear movements, the struggles for gender equality and the rights of sexual minorities, and more recently, for amplifying the voices of marginalized communities like refugees. Seven years ago, when I had the privilege of delivering the opening keynote at the Conference on Media Diversity and Democracy, held in conjunction with the CMFE General Assembly uh, in Brno, Czech Republic, I had commented that community media in Europe contribute to media pluralism and help strengthen cultural and linguistic diversity, social inclusion, and local identities. However, I had realized during that conference and subsequently during my visits to other countries like Germany, Austria, Cyprus, and so on, in the last five to six years, that the European community media landscape is in fact very diverse, very heterogeneous, with uh, a higher level of activity in Northern and Western Europe, while more modest levels of activity would be observed in Eastern and Central Europe. The rise of populist right-wing politics in many parts of Europe, the economic and social crises, including the challenge of dealing with large uh, scale waves of border crossings and the onward march of digital media platforms have all been very visible trends to contend with. Now, of course, the COVID-19 pandemic has added to these challenges amidst which community media are struggling to remain viable and meaningful. To discuss all of this, we have some eminent panelists who have joined us, who represent various national networks of community media, community radio in Europe uh, with us today in this dialogue. To help coordinate and moderate the two dialogues slated for today and on the 17th of this month, we are fortunate to have two very important people in the community media sector in Europe, Bridget Jalov and Michael Nicolai. Uh, Bridget Jala, uh, who all of you know, is the president of CMFE, the Community Media Forum of Europe, and the founding director of Empower House. She is a lifelong advocate of people's right to establish, own, and manage their own media. Uh, Bridget has, since the early 1980s, been very active in community media as a broadcaster, as a manager, trainer, advocate, and researcher in many countries around the world. Uh, in fact, my introduction to Bridget uh, was through the published work that I found uh, uh, on, on our work in Africa, and I've benefited immensely from that work. Uh, Bridget uh, co-founded Denmark's first uh, women's radio and was on the board of the initial AMARC conference uh, way back in 1983, co-organizing the women's panels representing community media in Northern Europe. Uh, she's a long-time member of AMARC's uh, WIN network, Women's International Network, 
I am very committed to ensuring women's engagement in community media. You saw that uh, initial uh, remarks of Bridget, uh, you know, saying that she would have liked to see more women on this panel, uh, but her commitment is deeper than that. Uh, but it's just symbolic of that, that commitment that she made that comment. Uh, the second co-moderator is uh, Michael Nikolai, uh, my friend from Germany, who has uh, helped me understand the complexities of the German community media sector during my own visits to Germany and his visit to India. Uh, it is indeed uh, a double privilege to have Nico join us for these dialogues because he's currently the president of Amark Europe. We couldn't have done better than having Bridget and Nico to help us with these European dialogues. Uh, Nico has been working in community radio for about two decades now, uh, of which about half of that time he spent with Radio Korax in Halle, Germany, playing the roles of coordinator of the daily current affairs program and later as project manager of the station. He's been a radio trainer in the field of community radio for over 10 years. He's been involved in community media networks in Germany, including the BFR. Uh, so I'm, I'm sure all of you, uh, the panelists and the audience agree that uh, we have two best moderators to help us through this dialogue, as well as the one following on September 17th. Uh, let me now invite uh, Bridget to take this discussion forward, please. Bridget. Thank you so much, Vinod, and uh, thank you for all your much too kind words. <laughs> we, are, we are blushing here. Um, it's so good to be with you, and also a very warm welcome to uh, all of you from uh, Nico and myself, the co-moderators, uh, and uh, to um, Vinod Pavarala and his team in Hyderabad. A warm thank you for this exciting world tour that we've been on. Uh, I've personally had a chance to join all the previous seven sessions and while uh, the world is so vast and the difference is huge, you can see that when you get to the community and you get to the community media, the similarities are more than the differences. Very, uh, very interesting and thank you for that. Nico and I, we have agreed to divide our role so that I will moderate this first uh, dialogue and Nico will uh, summarize uh, in the end. And on the 17th of September, where we have our second uh, session, a dialogue, uh, we will swap roles where Nico moderates and I will do the, the summary in the end. And if there are things in between, then Nico will support or I vice versa. We'll, we're working together on this. This is the eighth uh, edition, as uh, Vinod has already said. And uh, after having covered parts of Asia, parts of Africa, Australia, and the um, uh, UK and the Irish um, and, and Ireland, uh, we are uh, arriving in uh, continental Europe. Um, we cover today six uh, national community media associations looking for Brigitte, dein Mikro ist aus. So you have to unmute yourself. Okay, I, you haven't heard anything? We, we, we heard just, a, uh, we missed the last three sentences perhaps. Ah, okay, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, uh, it's good that you, that you interrupt me, otherwise it would be too boring, I hope. Um, so today we cover the six associations to look at the, the national structures and opportunities. And in two weeks on the 17th of September, we have invited um, representatives from six uh, community radio stations to cover the situation uh, more on the ground. What is the situation uh, all about right now? By then, we will have covered 11 European countries, starting in the east, uh, Bosnia, Herzegovina, Italy, France, Spain, Hungary, Austria, Germany, Luxembourg, Sweden, Norway, and Finland. And while you can ask yourself why uh, the UNESCO chair has chosen to have three dialogue for this tiny continent that if you take off some of the water can be squeezed into uh, Australia, then you can also say that Europe and Europe are a lot of different things. Uh, here, the European Union's Europe has 27 
member countries. The Council of Europe has 47 European country members. And uh, we can talk about the old Western Europe with some historic background. We can talk about the Central and Eastern Europe that has had different kind of history and background. We talk about some of the structural and uh, other uh, differences between the North and the South of Europe. So Europe is indeed a lot more than just one continent. Um, in each country, you have a media reality that's uh, very different. Uh, there are no, there's no coordination at the European level of uh, media legislation. There's no coordination of community media uh, frameworks. Uh, in Germany, for instance, you can say that the 16 Länder or the 16 states, they all have uh, each their media reality for community media, where some, uh, some are very favorable for, for community media, others are not at all. So there's just a huge number of different realities. And you can say that while there's not one authorized take on uh, the development of community media in Europe, uh, I will agree, first of all, with uh, Vinod that community media in Europe has been born out of uh, activist and civil society engagement. It has been the channel for the different movements uh, from when it started. Uh, having a quick tour of the force of the history, you can say that thousands of pirate stations roared through Italy and France from the early 70s, followed by Netherlands and Belgium, while the timbered Nordics, like myself, went on in uh, state-controlled periods of experiments uh, from the beginning of the 80s, breaking up the monopolies that we had been living within in the past, and then with Germany, Switzerland and Austria opening gradually from the mid 80s into the 90s uh, towards the end of which with the fall of the Berlin Wall and other walls and curtains, uh, some of the countries of Central and Eastern Europe managed to move on to the new stages fighting and still fighting as you will hear. Heading the board of Community Media Forum Europe and being regularly in touch with realities around our continent and working professionally with community media globally, I have seen that with globalization, the need for a community identity, community identification and anchorage has never, it's my experience, been greater. Using the presently ongoing pandemic as the magnifying lens, uh, we will have, we've seen community media come in some reality thrive and in others come under added pressure. So the question and the title of this dialogue, and I'm ending my small introduction now, uh, in this globalized world, the community has to be an important part of the answer. The question is, and this is the question we will be debating today, where uh, are we each in our national realities? which are the opportunities and which are the threats that we encounter now? And how can we, even in more unfavorable realities, I hope we can explore together, turn this in our favor. So with these words, uh, I am uh, really pleased, honored and happy to introduce our six panelists. And then uh, you will not hear much more from me, then it's their turn. First of all, I'm happy to welcome uh, Dr. Helga Schwarzwald, the Managing Director of the Association of Free Radios in Austria, the Verband Freier Radios Österreich. Um, Helga has uh, always had a focus on uh, media and their role, including in her PhD dissertation on pornography and law. Uh, professionally, Helga started as a partner in the Salzburg uh, Women's Council as a feminist legal advisor and um, moved on to work on the free art and culture scenes in Amsterdam and in Austria and elsewhere. She also managed Radio Orange um, in, um, from uh, Radio Orange 94.0, it's, it's a real name, in Vienna from 2004 to 2011. She's been a board member uh, of Austria Free Radio Association and of the community TV Octo and IG Kultur. And now she is managing director of all of that. So with that, uh, let's move on to, and thank you very much, Helga, for being with us. We'll move on to Fabian Ekstedt, uh, who is the managing director of uh, the Radio Laura in uh, Munich. Um, he is uh, here today 
in his capacity as a board member of the Federal Association of Free Radios and a, a founding member of the Verband Community Media Bayern, as I was saying, each state in Germany have their own structures on top of the federal structure. Uh, Fabian has always been an advocate for community media and uh, worked practically as a broadcaster at Radio Laura and always had an eye to ensure that different people can participate uh, and that there's space for uh, all of us. Um, before that, uh, Fabian, uh, besides from being a trained carpenter, has worked with self-management and empowerment, founded a youth uh, association, and is a self-declared news junkie. Welcome, Fabian. Nice to have you with us. Uh, from Hungary, we have Akos uh, Shahati, who is the managing director of uh, civil radio based in Budapest, one of two community radios left in Hungary, and how that all uh, is um, interconnected. We will hear a lot more about from Akos. Akos uh, graduated as a psychologist in 2004, wrote a diploma thesis about volu volu voluntarism and its motivation. And it was when he visited uh, the civil radio to see voluntarism in real life that he was stunned to see how independent free media actually could work with on the basis of having volunteers. So since 2006, he has been in charge of coordinating uh, civil radio and uh, works with uh, uh, the whole civil society, NGOs, and so on. So warm welcomes to you, uh, Akos. Thank you. Um, from uh, Spain, we have uh, Isabel Lema Blanco, uh, who is on the board of the Spanish Network of Community Media, also a social science researcher and lecturer in communication at the University of A Coruña in Spain. She has studied the educative role of mass media and community media in Spain for 15 years and recently published an analysis of the deficient community media legislation, uh, regulation in Spain. So we will also hear a lot more about that. She's been the president of community radio CUAC FM from 2003 to 6 and is now uh, on their board. Uh, she's also a board member of, as I said, the Association of Community Media of uh, AMAG Europe and uh, in, uh, has been a speaker in the European Parliament promoting minority languages in Europe through community media. So Isabel, thank you very much for joining us and welcome. Uh, Ragnar Nils Olof Schmidberg is from Sweden. He is the president of the Swedish National Association of Community Radio. He's been a manager of Radio Eskilstuna in Sweden from 1990 to 2012 for 22 years and in uh, 2010 this added also a tv station where he was the manager until 2017. Now he works on an online news medium in Eskilstuna where he's based and been, has been a part of many international Leonardo and Erasmus projects, attended Amag Europe uh, events and uh, is now on the board of CMFE. So uh, welcome to you Ragnar, thank you for joining us. The last but not least uh, of our six member panel is uh, Nicholas Horber, who is representative of the Radio, Cam uh, Campus, um, uh, in Radio Campus, Radio Campus, Radio Campus. <laughs> it is a network of national and international uh, partners and uh, Nicholas role is to help the radios uh, to structure the organizations to receive the authorization and to sign agreements and so on, all the organizational development stuff. Uh, he's also in charge of an almost autonomous and independent DAB plus multiplex in Mulhouse and involved in an experimental radio station called PI Node, pnode.org. So uh, also to you, Nicola, and sorry for the stumbling at the beginning. Welcome to you, thank you for joining us. So with all of these welcomes and all of these introductions from uh, Mr. Pavarala and myself, uh, on behalf of Nico and myself, uh, I'm very happy to uh, turn the mic to you. Uh, I should like to invite you, Helga, to begin because you were the one I introduced first. And I have asked all six of you to prepare no more than five minutes on what is community media all about in your country? What is the legislation? How many do you have? What's the role of women in the stations? 
uh, and other pertinent issues. I'm sure you have selected what you each find most important. So over to you, Helga. Thank you very much. Thank you, Birgitta. Thanks again for the invite and the initiative to, to Vinod. Uh, first of all, I, I really appreciate the talks. I would have loved to have more. Um, being able to, to be at more uh, than the ones I, I did. So now I tell you something about the Austrian situation. First of all, I'm happy to say our name is not Verband Freier Radius Österreich anymore. It's a very brand new um, development that you are one of the first. I, I have the privilege to, to share that news with. Uh, we are now the Verband Freier Rundfunk Österreich, so we expanded our uh, uh, scope of, of, of members uh, to TV stations, which we, we hadn't uh, so far. And um, we are happy to have uh, now two more uh, TV stations uh, as our members, Okto TV in Vienna and FS1 in Salzburg. We are uh, also in talks to, to get on board in terms of also financial abilities and, and uh, framework uh, that the last one can also chain, uh, join us. So uh, I think it's a, gr a great opportunity that we have uh, created with this um, sort of getting broader in terms of, of resources, in terms of knowledge, in terms of, of uh, media convergence uh, that is just just uh, suitable for the time we are in. So we, we won't stop by the TV stations. We already have also applications uh, from, from uh, very diverse uh, institutions from the educational field as well as from the digital only uh, archive or yeah uh, internet-based uh, archival uh, institutions that are very much linked to the community radios. So I think it's it's very uh, uh, suitable that from the that that, that we can welcome uh, them into the radio um, assembly as as we as an organization were the first that was there even before the the first station was on air legally. The, 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 the association I'm representing is, was founded in 1993, as you, Brigitte, already said. It was a time when uh, monopolies or state monopoly were still in place. Uh, I, I really have to, to stress that Austria was one of the last countries in, in Europe, only Albania was later, to, to uh, get rid of the monopoly. The, the free radios, or namely some stations that were in founding back then, and the, the, the association of, of the free radios were uh, essential in, in really uh, getting rid of it and also uh, uh, calling on to the European uh, Court of Human Rights. Uh, who then or which then uh, uh, ruled that the monopoly is against the media and information, the, the human right on media and information freedom. So that was the starting point in 1998. The first um, station went on air uh, with a 24-7 license. There were previous stations that had like a window in cooperation with the commercial uh, private uh, station in, in, in Helsinki. I saw Lale Rodgagiadara from uh, Radio Helsinki also joining us, which I'm really pleased uh, to, to have also colleagues from here. And she's, she's pretty new in this role, but she's an uh, activist from the beginning and, uh, uh, and, and a broadcaster by passion, I would say. So, yeah. Uh, let me introduce her also shortly. So now we, we are uh, in the situation that Austria is, uh, as a German-speaking country, in the like legal framework and also media market, uh, very much uh, always looking to, to Germany as, as, as like the, the 10 times bigger market. Uh, we know as, as activists and, and lobbyists that uh, the problem also is that media 
politics often are seen as market politics, less than societal or, or media politics as a democratical tool. And, and we try very hard to, to bring that also to the attention of the, of the uh, state government. Um, in the last years, we, maybe I can get back to, we have 14 radio stations in Austria. They are broadcasting 24 seven. They um, are all, the, the youngest is about 10 years old. The oldest is uh, to, are like from 98 broadcasting um, without interruption. Then we have three community TV stations. Um, I think the special, or I'm very proud of, of our uh, achievement in terms of, of archiving our programs for almost 20 years now, and also being able to, to, to offer them for re-listening, for discovering newly, uh, unlimited in time and, and space so far. And we are trying to really expand that. We have developed a new um, a platform or interface to, to really meet usability uh, developments. But I will, I will share that with you. Before, we, before I hand over to someone else, Helga, maybe uh, if, uh, if you have considered some, some impacts some, some changes in Austria that have been caused or inspired by community media. If we could wrap up with that and then we move on. I think it's participation mm -hmm. that is really getting into the mainstream and where we are an expert and we made a really an impact. I think it's also uh, media literacy. It's, it's training. It's, it's a, a, the democratic value. It's also the, the, the journalism, constructive journalism uh, mm -hmm. on, on eye level. I think that's the, the big issues and, and also standing against the right wing uh, policy in, in intimidating uh, journalists that we have seen over the last years also again and again. I think that's also an important stand where we I'll try to, to mark that. So let's thank you for now. You will get the word again and we'll move on to Akos uh, to hear what the situation is like in Hungary. It's a neighbor to Austria, but I bet, and I already said, that the situation is not quite similar. Akos, the word is yours. Yeah, thank you so much. It's not easy to give you an overview about the Hungarian community media sector in five minutes, but I try. Um, Actually, the Hungarian community media has two roots, two origins, but both of them started in the very early 90s when Hungary was liberated. The stationing Soviet uh, army left the country and the society prepared for the first free elections. And the people were very active. A lot of communities were formed, a lot of organizations, NGOs, and also foreign um, NGOs that aim the development of the society and democracy, they supported these communities, these organizations, and um, civil radio's um, um, story started at that time when in the early 90s, a group of communi community de uh, developers, um, social workers and teachers could go to a study trip to Western Europe and they visited uh, NGOs in Germany, in the Netherlands, in Austria, and uh, they were taken to places where there were community radios. And it surprised them because they had never known anything. It was completely unfamiliar here. There was the uh, Hungarian national television and uh, the radio with two or three stations, and um, there were no commercial radios. And this group of people could lobby out uh, the decision makers to have this category or give frequencies, especially to communities that were active in smaller settlements. And um, the, the other route is the, the story of Tilos Radio, which is another big community radio here, which started as a pirate radio. There are urban legends that uh, they had a car and circulated around the city and the police chased them. 
and uh, that's another branch of the Hungarian community media. I think our uh, style or our story affected much more the Hungarian sector, partly because these community developers had a network and uh, they could found almost 60, 68 uh, different radios in smaller villages, settlements all over Hungary. So I could say that we had a really flourishing community media, community radio sector until 2010 when this current government came to power. And since that we had a very loose uh, community or oh, media regulation. Um, but in 2010, the right wing uh, party that won the elections immediately changed the media law. And that was the first time when community media was mentioned in the regulation, but in a different way. And as a result of this new regulation, um, almost in four years, the radios, most of them disappeared. And now we have three or four uh, community radios, if we include the university radios as well, that could survive this regulation and uh, the media authorities activities. And uh, also civil radio after Brought, after being on air for 25 years, we lost our radio license in um, December. So from January, we are broadcasting only via online, but we decided to go on. And uh, I don't want to go into the details, maybe later if we have time, why or, or about the details of this uh, regulation, um, but that's, that's our story. I would love uh, for you just to add on just very briefly, like I asked Helga, uh, what has the impact of having community media in Hungary been? I remember when I was in Budapest not so long ago, I, drive, I drove with a cab driver and he said, uh, totally, I didn't, uh, I didn't give him any cues. He said, it's terrible to be a cab driver because I cannot listen to civil radio any longer on, on air. This was the only free voice that we loved so much. But anyway, what kind of changes has your, have, have your community media had a ch chance to, to, um, to um, generate in your society? If, just briefly. Hmm? I would also mention participation, as what Helga yeah. mentioned. And uh, nowadays, and we had to wait a lot for this impact, a lot of people now like civil radio and the community radios mentioning that uh, because of the authenticity and the credibility. They say that we are working with volunteers, therefore we have no reason or interest to lie. So we share stories and all the other mediums and this fake news phenomena became very wide and the people don't know what news are fake, what mediums are authentic, but they believe that this type of radio and this type of movement should be because we are working with ordinary, average citizens and people, not paid journalists. Thank you so much. Thank you, Akos. Uh, I'm happy to now move on to, um, to Fabian. Uh, in, uh, in Germany, we already... Uh, mentioned the complicated reality that you're now going to present to us. Yeah, I hope I don't have to get into much detail. We don't, uh, we don't have time for that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, the German Federation for Free, of Free Radios or Bundesverband Freie Radios has 31 members in 12 federal states. There are other non-commercial and educational radio stations and open channels but we can't really say if they met the, um, if they are considered or can be considered community radius. For us, com free or community radius are independent, self-determined, open mass media that operate non-commercial, make grassroots, democratic social broadcasting that critically examines existing social conditions and is intended to promote free expression. So. And we were founded in 1993. I wasn't there. And, um, uh, but community radio existed longer in Germany, especially in the 
Dreiländereck, Border Triangle of Germany, France, Switzerland, and maybe Nicholas can tell a little bit later about that. Um, started like 1977. In Germany, the init initiative started in the 80s, really strong, and in the late 80s, beginning of the 90s, we had the first community radios approved, and some are being added until today. So, and the community media um, movement started, as far as I can tell, with uh, the anti-nuclear movement and the connection between the different um, social justice and civil rights movements and ecological movements. It keeps on today, and we have a lot of a musical subculture that came there too. The legal situation is, uh, in Germany, the broadcasting landscape is federally divided, as you said, a consequence of our inglorious history of abusing broadcasting for state propaganda. And these experiences are also the reason why our fi financing, as well as the financing of public broadcasting, takes place via the license fee or uh, Rundfunkgebühr, as we call it. It's like a tax, but it's not a tax, and um, it's divided. So we have 14 different broadcasting treaties in 16 federal states, uh, each with its own rules for the community media. So it's not easy to say what the role of community media is right now in Germany. It's really different. There are some federal states that particularly mention the importance of community media and give a basic funding from broadcasting freeze while other federal states largely reject the basic funding and instead reduce distribution fees and distribute project funding. But to say something good, we are not, uh, we are very free in our programs and not ex do not experience any censorship. Only thing may be a little bit of a um, protection of minors. So we can say everything we want on air, but it's okay. Right now, there's a little bit of um, confusion around FM and DAB+. So some states want DAB+, altogether, and FM cancelled out. Others say, um, let's move them to the internet or 5G. That's the goals of the state authorities in politics. For us, on the other hand, it's important to always be available via the most widespread means. Uh, of distribution and never only to broadcast in the internet because first the fundamental traceability of listening behavior is to be viewed critical with internet offers. And altogether we demand equal rights as the big media. Right now we are working hard to ensure the importance of community media is understood in all federal states and that the legal framework and sufficient funding is provided. At the same time, however, we also need legal certainty as, well, as we expect a shift in the right in the politics and as a result in the media supervisory authorities, even if those not really are um, political per se. Last but not least, we are concerned of our fiscal stages because recently some socially political organizations in Germany have been non have had their non-profit status withdrawn because they were too political or too uncomfortable. For example, mm -hmm. the association of those prosecuted by the Nazi regime, the association of anti-fascists, or attack the network of critical globalization. This could mean um, if it's it's a, it's a threat. If we lose our, if we could lose our non-profit status, mm. our um, stations are, are coming to the stations. Some stations have twenty-four-seven. Others, like Munich, we um, have our frequency split, and we split it with um, church radio. What's really happy for us and <laughs> drives a lot of hear listeners away. Um, we, in our stations, there work uh, refugees, retirees, um, students, although their participation depends heavily on the rental prices in the city. Children, young people, foreign and exile editorial office for foreign language communities and a lot of musical subcultures. Mm. In other words, everyone who has the time has the sense of mission and who agrees with our principles is welcome to participate. Other media we don't have it, 
we have free radio so but we are working with, um, to ensure that podcasts and seven day and media takes or libraries are possible for us um, and all our stations are linked to the VBB free radio, radios.net website where everybody can exchange um, bits and programs. Uh, Austria has it too. Mm -hmm. And um, we work together um, furthermore on projects and um, joint formats like we made in Munich the uh, special program to the pronouncement of judgment in the NSU trial against the neo-Nazi terrorists. We have a fem uh, feminist day each year and uh, the first joint project were, were the G20 protests in Hamburg. Wonderful. I think the, the time more or less is up, but I would love you briefly to answer two questions if you, if you, if you have the information. How many stations do you have in, uh, 31. in Germany? Huh? 31. 31. 31. Uh, yes. All over. Yeah. All over in 12 yeah. federal states. Okay. And uh, the, the second question is the same question I've asked uh, your two colleagues before. Is um, have you seen any uh, any impact, any uh, societal um, impact, <laughs> change yeah. from from uh, f that the community media have caused that would not probably have been caused otherwise? I think mostly it's the um, connection of. Uh, different political and uh, or societal um, organizations, the feminists, queer activists, animal rights activists, eco-activists, anti-fascists, foreign language communities and all the other committed people come together and stay in conversation. Ideally, mm -hmm. we are at a point, networking point where they meet and discuss with each other of the program or the program in which all these topics are networked and perceived. We want to be the interface of civil society. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you, Fabian. Thank you for joining us. I would love to give the word now to, uh, we move to Spain. Uh, we give the word to Isabel Lema Blanco. The word is yours, madam. You have to unmute yourself, maybe. Yes, yeah, okay. <laughs> Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much for inviting me. Um, well, actually, I have to say that in Spain, there is a long tradition, I think, of free and community media specifically radio stations that they have been functioning since the beginning of the transition to democracy. So uh, uh, since 78, 79, and they split, um, the community media movement split uh, out um, maybe in the 80s, I, I would like to say. Um, uh, well, uh, we have uh, uh, count about around 150 free and community radio stations in Spain, but th these uh, data are not official, so there is not a special of uh, public um, uh, data set uh, where to consult that. So these are data uh, produced by different research groups uh, from the university, but they have account about 150 free and community radio stations and a very small number of television because some of the, the community televisions had to had been closure by by the administration <laughs> in the in the 90s mm -hmm. um, yeah uh, in terms of the community community media network i'm i'm representing here in this meeting uh, we we i have to say that the the, the rank that is the name of the community, network, uh, community media network in Spain, represents about 60 of the, of the community radio stations. Uh, mm -hmm. Some of, some of uh, our stations are huge stations, are local stations, but other are very, very small. And most of the small uh, radio stations are not uh, involved in the, in the national or in the federal uh, organization and networking work. So, uh, but uh, we, we are more or less 60, member, uh, 60 members in the, in the network. Uh, I have to say that uh, community media and in Spain uh, are private and non-profit media actors that aim to fulfill a social purpose and that are managed by citizens organizations, civil associations, and NGO. 
So community media don't represent in our country public media or local media that are owned by public institutions or uh, educational centers. These represent, uh, they are represented by other networks, but not by our, the community media movement. Um, and these media are open to the widest possible participation, both in the ownership of the media, in decision making, and also, of course, in the access to the broadcast activity. So that are the characteristics that uh, I think that we share in, in the community media network. Uh, we have been, uh, we, we, uh, we as a network, uh, our activity began, began in 2005. Uh, the rank was promoted by various community radio and television projects, but we legally were constituted uh, as a federation of associations on May uh, 2009. Uh, so we've been working in an informal way uh, mm -hmm. for many years before, <laughs> you know, constitute uh, mm -hmm. as, as a or legal organization and, and so on. No? Uh, we have been defending the right to communicate for 15 years uh, and since our creation in 99, uh, the REM has worked in the institutional and legal sphere in the promotion and defense of the right to the existence of the free and community media in Spain. So mm -hmm. we mainly uh, conducted a lobby uh, work, a lobby action to be acknowledged, but uh, in terms of political uh, recognition, but also gaining uh, acknowledge in the regulation and the legisla legislation, the laws that governs the, the communication um, environment in Spain. Uh, I have to say that community radios have been considered pirate radios for many years, but not now because uh, the first uh, in 2010, uh, the, the Spanish parliament approved the, the general law for audiovisual communications and this, this, this law in 2010 uh, has provided legal recognition to community radios in practice. Uh, but actually, we have to say that despite this uh, legal recognition, uh, the reality is that the community media uh, are seeing uh, their capacity dismissed. And uh, 10 years later, the, the majority of the community media in Spain have not uh, obtained a broadcasting license, uh, despite the fact that they, they have opted uh, for one of the, the, the license on, on very occasions, on a lot of occasions. Why is this? Uh, one, uh, only three radios has gained a commercial license because nor the state, nor the regional government have a, have uh, convoked, have uh, organized uh, uh, a contest for community, community media. So uh, actually I have to say that in Spain, the community radio and televisions have faced more than 40 years uh, of a number of legal and institutional barriers, as well economic and social issues uh, that has uh, jeopardized the consolidation, our consolidation as media, and uh, we need to tackle uh, these, these uh, principal barriers in order to, to involve citizens in, in, in media, in media broadcasting. Uh, I have uh, prepared, I have list uh, a series of uh, political and also legal barriers, uh, and I think that we, I can explain later better, but I have to say that uh, despite the historical lack of uh, appropriate regulation for the Spanish, Spanish uh, community sector, uh, this involves the lack of frequencies, as I mentioned before. We also, uh, as, as, as a movement, we, the movement suffers as well uh, insufficient economic and human resources, and mm -hmm. also insufficient um, uh, political support uh, because uh, the majority, uh, the majority of the political parties in the in the parliament uh, have not supported uh, mm. in real uh, the community sector. Mm. So uh, these these uh, barriers uh, work against the, the economic and the political sustainability mm. uh, of the community sector and leaves uh, leaves them in a very weak position 
if we compare with the many European colleagues that we are listening, <laughs> um, we are listening the, the, their experience now uh, here. And also we, some of these community radios, the, the more uh, slow community radios, uh, they are struggling now to, to survive. And mm. also we suspect that the, the COVID situation uh, has closed uh, some of these media. So uh, the sector suffers from uh, this uh, persecution sometimes uh, from the public administrations and some mm -hmm. of the community radios have been have closed or the public administrations attempted to close it and in occasions for example in in, in the case of quack fm where i'm involved as a broadcaster and, and, and as a manager uh, we have to we have to defend in court our uh, right to to communicate in our defense, we have to defend and we won on court uh, our license. So you won. <laughs> yes, we won. <laughs> Congratulations. Uh, Isabel, uh, your time is up, but uh, could you put a few words now? It looks like the, se the sector in Spain is, is really uh, mainly struggling for survival and recognition and all of the things that you mentioned. Um, could you say that, uh, why is it worth struggling for? What is it that community radio gives you in Spain. Just a few words, please. I'm sorry, can, can, you, can you repeat the question? I can hear really well. The impact of community well, media, oh, community impact. radio, why is it worth fighting for in Spain? Yeah, because I think this, uh, it's um, the very impact is that community media, despite it is barriers and, and struggles and so on, uh, they, they were uh, success, they succeed in satisfying the, the communication needs of citizens mm -hmm. and social groups. And they, they actually, they enabled the exercise of the right to communication and freedom of expression for individuals and communities, and especially local communities, because there is, uh, there is a, a process of concentration of um, the property of media uh, at the national and international level and mm. most of the local media uh, have been uh, closed and I think that community media uh, they, they play a, a very a key role in, yeah. in representing in, in presenting the, the voice of the local communities. So we stop there. I thank you very much. Thank you Isabel for joining us and we will move to, um, to Sweden now to Ragnar Smitberg to hear how, uh, what community media is all about in Sweden in these five minutes. Yes. I think you've all had six, but uh, that's where I begin to interrupt. <laughs> yes. Ragnar, the word is yours. We have two left and then we want to discuss uh, the um, impact of the COVID uh, pandemic uh, on your stations and the, the media reality you're operating in. So Ragnar, well, uh, we can't hear you. Can't hear me. You, you have to be a little louder. Um, I'm coming a little more near here. Can yes, that helps. Now? Yep. Uh, if you can come even nearer, it's better. The word is oh. yours, Ragnar. Ah, okay. Um, the, the community radio in Sweden started uh, 1979 uh, uh, as a, a contrast to the uh, public service who have been uh, the only uh, radio station uh, in Sweden uh, and the, the, the thought was that uh, they wanted uh, local communities uh, uh, an association to, to hear uh, coming out in the, the air. Uh, and uh, the second station in 1979 uh, that was starting was uh, Eskilstuna uh, and I was uh, uh, broadcasting then, so I was young then. <laughs> uh, today, uh, uh, yeah, I, I will say that in the beginning, uh, um, uh, it, uh, we had about uh, over 2,000 uh, license uh, in Sweden uh, and um, 
uh, we have a special system in Sweden. It's, it's not the, the station who has the license, it's the local association who has it. And um, uh, so uh, when, when we today in uh, uh, the Swedish uh, Community Media Federation uh, have uh, about 50 uh, members, then uh, it will be clear that uh, uh, we rep rep represent about 200 local associations because uh, uh, our members can have uh, a lot of members inside. And um, uh, they could have uh, several studios uh, also. Uh, the problem to, uh, to, today we have from, uh, about uh, 600 license in Sweden uh, in the local uh, organizations. Uh, so it has uh, been less because from the beginning it, uh, it was over 2000 as I said. Uh, the problem today, uh, as we see it, is uh, that uh, the local organizations uh, um, often choose uh, other media to uh, coming out uh, to, to uh, have their message. Uh, and um, so we had a competition to, to the social medias, to pod radios uh, and uh, home sites. Uh, with many uh, uh, local association has. Um, and um, uh, what, what we had to think about in, in uh, uh, our federation is that we perhaps should uh, take in pod radios uh, who is, could be interesting uh, uh, at the local um, level. Uh, so, um, we will see what we can do, uh, and, and we have also uh, updated our training materials so that we can uh, help our uh, members to, to uh, have better uh, um, programs uh, in several ways. Yes, that's what I want to say. I want to ask you the same question that I've asked uh, your other colleagues. Um, why is it important to uh, have community media in Sweden? What is, it, what is the difference that community media make? And I noticed that your organization had a very strong role during the, uh, the, the, the beginning of the pandemic. You were very instructive in informing the stations what they could do, what they should remember in terms of the community members that maybe were not um, uh, mobile and things like that. So uh, why is it important in Sweden to fight for community media? What is the impact that you have? The impact, as I see it, is that our values is very important. In, in this time when, when uh, there is so much uh, um, false news and, and all these things, uh, the community media stands for, for uh, good values. Uh, and uh, uh, we are also uh, we are we, we are doing a good job. Uh, many new podcasts uh, they they don't uh, do with, uh, so good jobs, uh, uh, and uh, we we have a, a good competition in in this uh, in competition. Why is that? Just two words. Why are the community media more reliable and better? Well, sorry, um, <laughs> I'm pointing at you. Sorry, Ragnar. <laughs> I, I I didn't uh, follow you there. Uh, you say that the uh, community media are better than uh, podcasts and so on. They're more reliable, and I'm saying why is that? I think it's because we have sent radio uh, so long time. We know the rules, uh, which uh, uh, the, the new broadcasting often don't know. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ragnar. We'll move on to you, uh, Nicolas, uh, from um, the um, campus radio in France. 
Um, again, thank you very much for joining us. And uh, now you're being the last, so you'll be the first with the add-on question. So you can look forward. <laughs> the word is yours, uh, Nicola. You have to unmute, I think. Are you there, Nicola? Can you see maybe Vasuki if uh, Nicola? Yeah, here we are. We don't hear you. Be better. Ah, okay. Now it's better. Yes, perfect. Okay. <laughs> Welcome. So, uh, in computer problems. So, uh, uh, the, the oldest uh, ra community radio in France, uh, in my uh, opinion, but it may be not the oldest, is uh, Radio Campus Lille, uh, Raisel, in the north of France. Christian was uh, a student. He created Radio Campus Lille because he was listening to the offshore pirates' uh, Eng English radios, and he decided to build his own uh, transmitter. So they started to broadcast, and then you have the story that uh, Fabian also speak, uh, speak a bit, spoke a bit about the, 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 the struggle against the counter-nuclear, the, the struggle for freedom of speech, the struggle for already the same problems as today for the migration uh, problems. So many, many community, pirate community radio started in the 70s because as I said, 1969 was the, the oldest I know, a radio campus little. But uh, before the legal, before they legalized, before the state legalized the, the landscape of a, of a community radio, we must also insist on the fact that they were also commercial radio doing pirate radio because they discovered that there was a local treasure uh, to, be, uh, to be kept by them. So they also made lobby to the states in the 70s in order to make, uh, in 1981, uh, to make the, to legalize uh, diversity of media. So that was the end of the public services uh, monopoly, um, 1981. Then they created a category uh, in which there is one, which is a category A, means associative, and these are radios that are uh, not supposed to do advertising. Mm -hmm. Very few advertising is, uh, is uh, authorized, but not too much. So that's the first negotiation. There were in the, in the 80s, a negotiation to, uh, to make the community radio the possibility to get granted by the state because the commercial radio had to give a, a point of their uh, benefits in a, in a common treasure to, to make the community radio doing social communication, social communication of proximity then this is a, a goal and mission they have locally. Uh, that's the first uh, of the, the, the consequence of the legal issue. Today we are still uh, struggling a bit uh, regarding DAB+, for example. Uh, no, we, uh, we challenge the fact that uh, with the DAB it's not possible anymore to be autonomous, but many multiplex in France, powered by community radio, uh, proved that it's possible to to invest. The local radio can invest uh, into the DAB and have their own multiplex. Uh, how many community medias in France? More than 600. Mm -hmm. But uh, this is a huge number. But at the same time, we also have, I do not have the real specific metrics, but I guess there are lots of uh, quite commercial, which means uh, not open radio, mm -hmm. but also included in this category A. Mm -hmm which uh, have the benefits of uh, public grants, but also a bit of advertising, and they work as if they were a, a company. This is, I don't know, maybe a third part of the, the world. We also have uh, lots of radios that are uh, very basic community radio with a standard um, uh, organization. You can come, get into the association, and uh, take part to the project, to the programs, etc. Uh, citizens radio standard uh, mid, mid, so, uh, medium and you have also very very involved in very uh, not politics but very involved in, in more involved in the, the in, for example diversity uh, of, uh, the possibility of uh, l minority languages etc so this is quite uh, the landscape um, 
I guess we have a lack of a lot of things in the radios, in the community media in France, because we, most of them are old, and that doesn't excuse the fact that they are a, a bit close, but uh, it's the use that makes uh, things very hard. And we have a lack of involved uh, women, uh, for sure, a lack of a, um, it's mainly white uh, men in the radios. But, must be confirmed by metrics, but voilà, it's a work I can see. The role of impact of the community station is that we have, uh, I guess, freedom of speech, with, because it's very hard to be, to be broadcasted on the public service, to be broadcasted in the commercial radio. So this is a, a good point. It's also, it created in the long term, during 30 years, also a sort of a civil a society, society layer. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, the music or the culture, Cultural diversity is very, very, very important in the community radio. Mm -hmm. That's what we are saying. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, the issue about uh, the white men, um, it's fine that we have them, but uh, you said that there are very few women. Do you have any um, idea or have you had any initiatives to, um, to open or to make it more, more conducive, more inviting, more relevant for women to engage? Just brief. Uh, in, in the network I work for, we, we put the question on the table, it's mm -hmm. a French translation in English, but uh, every year for a long time, the, the, the president uh, of the network is a girl and uh, mm -hmm. it's very important. We are thinking about how it, the democracy in the, the, these NGOs works because mm -hmm. uh, sometimes we, we discover that uh, maybe male are more... Uh, uh, speaks louder. I'm sorry for this <laughs> tricky translation, but uh, uh, do not have the, the, the nuance. But uh, mm. we discovered that the, the system, organization system, has some lack, and we try to, mm. to to make it different. It's a very, very, and this one, but many other subjects, and the, the, the community radio, like we are, are also very focused on on the ground, which means uh, people from the ground, from the local. Uh, it's the main, it's the main target. Mm. I would say audience is important, but it's it's second time, uh, not very far. But the main thing is how we involve the young people uh, regarding so uh, with problem with social standings or that sort of things. With youth, youth policies are very important in our radio. The the, the educational stuff, etc. But I, I keep some subjects for later. I think. Great. Uh, it sounds a little bit like in uh, one of the, the dialogues uh, from Africa, there was reference made to uh, uh, the person who is said to be one of the pioneers of uh, community radio in Africa, uh, Sane Ibrahim, who always stressed that uh, in community radio, 90% is community and 10% is radio. And it sounds like uh, you abide a little bit by that. Anyway, uh, thank you very much. We, this, is a, this was a long in, uh, introduction round, but I wanted everyone who are, who are listening from around the world to have an idea of uh, what kind of community radio profiles do we have in Europe. So now I should like, not everyone needs to answer every question from now on, but I'd like to start with you, uh, Nicola. As I said, you were the last, so you should be the first. Um, I would like uh, you and others to also reflect on maybe just brief uh, comments on the role played by your association during this um, pre present pandemic. Um, whereas we have seen uh, in CMFE and Amag Europe and elsewhere a lot of different um, uh, impacts, uh, positive impacts where radios have catapulted uh, into their uh, the long-term development goal, they have done everything they wanted to do in the next five years in terms of getting new languages on board, for example. We've also seen many stations, some of you mentioned some stations having to close and uh, a lot of financial challenges uh, also coming up. So uh, maybe you'd like to, to start, Nicola, to say what is the role your association in general plays towards your members? What is it you help them with? Uh, why are you important? That's a one point. The ne next one is, what have you done during the pandemic? And I would like the rest of you panelists to also reflect on this and then to add on to Nicholas and you will just uh, let me know who wants to speak after, after you've started. Uh, the, the, the word is yours, Nicola. And you have to uh, unmute your mic first. If I understood well, um, first question is, well, what is our role as a French network? 
yeah. we have sort of a two main mission, two main goal. The, the first one is an editorial goal. We are, mm -hmm. we, are, we are here to make collaboration between the stations in order to bring, for example, uh, more visibility uh, for young artists, emerging artists, or such subjects, some, some of the subjects, so they, are, they are produced locally, but broadcasted nationally. And also in mm -hmm. such some event, we organize the collaboration. So people are also uh, here for, to learn. For example, journalism, we went into European Parliament. That was a network uh, action. We, bring, we brought their uh, people to, to be on, on the ground of uh, European uh, editorial questions. And so they learn, I hope they learn many things. This is the editorial part. And then on the other side, we also have, a, uh, we are supporting the radio. We are, for example, we go to the, the national authority in order to, to, to give uh, strength to young project. We, for mm -hmm. example, recently we have, uh, we had a, a very young campus radio project that were almost only on the web. And uh, now they are uh, authorized on the common, what I call the common good of uh, frequencies. So we help, we try to help them. We, we are small, so I, we must keep uh, humility, but we try to do our best for them. So that's the two main goals. Uh, second question was about uh, what we made during the... The pandemic. The pandemic. What, what uh, were the challenges and what could you as an association do to support uh, um, your members? What did the, our members and what we did as the network? Uh, but radios, the first eight, 10 days, it was sort of a very strange period because um, most of the people and the radio especially also didn't really get what was, what was happening. So we had a sort of a strange first, first, first week of uh, mm -hmm. interrogation, what is happening, uh, et cetera. Started to be forbidden to go into the studio, et cetera. So uh, mm -hmm. uh, then the radios, uh, put the head out of the water and decided to use, uh, yeah, sorry, <laughs> my English. Uh, lots of radio decided to go further with uh, their, their role, which is to, to give a sort of a fatigue contact with the people. Um, because we, people was, were uh, in the containment, they were at home, and the media was something very, very fast. We discovered that the media had to do their role. So, uh, the first reaction I, I received from radio is that we do not have more audience, but our audience is a, is a closer to us now, very more, more involved. And then we also have uh, some radios that decided to, to go further with the programs, with the program production from home. And so they put tools uh, through the web, uh, for example, to, to do programs live from home. Maybe the quality was lower, but what was very important is that the people were in touch with the community of the listeners of each radio. And that's where the, the network also tried to, to, to support, not to support, to, uh, mm -hmm. to help with this, is that we tried to put uh, tools, for example, uh, servers with uh, tools to broadcast from home, trying to find solutions uh, for uh, collaborations, uh, distant collaborations, etc. Voilà. And uh, for sure, we also had the job to, to be, of being in touch with the, 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 the authority, mm -hmm. all, all the authority. Uh, for example, we, we said, uh, please uh, make it easier for some of the young project to, to have a, a temporary uh, authorization to broadcast in FM. Well, that was just a question. We had no answer, at, actually. But also regarding the economic part, because uh, our radio, I didn't develop before, but the, the, the radios are all, most of the radios have a, an economy. I mean, they have a people employed, etc. So uh, that was the first question. What is going on regarding the money? For example, media literacy, yeah, the radio campus network is a, a network very involved in the media literacy. So we have a lot, lot of workshops with uh, national uh, education, with the school, national school, with uh, many, many public. So these were off. So the first question was also economic. So we tried to, to give, to bring answers to these economic questions regarding what was happening, what the state put uh, on the table. Again. So. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, who wants to go, um, who wants to uh, add on uh, Nicolas' uh, introduction on, the, um, on the, the role of the association and the the, the role during the pandemic. Fabian, I see your hand. Um, go. 
The word is yours. Yes. Okay. Um, so the question uh, uh, two essentially: What have we done, and um, what was our role, or what is our role in um, crisis situation? So what we have done is um, the community was really big topic. Some station took their questions and asked them to the people who in power or the decision makers so they could um, get their questions answered. We connected the voices of our um, staff so they could hear each other in the time of a great, uh, of a, not lockdown, but um, strict social distancing um, and asked for a way to cope with this, uh, with the situation. And it's about not being alone, hearing um, known voices. And as a radio and association, we were um, pitching each other what we have done, what is our way of um, being sure that we don't infect each other, um, what are our ideas and how did we digital, digitalize things. So, but our role, um, we are reliable source from the bottom up. And in Germany, it's um, the virus isn't the biggest problem right now. We have those um, uh, anti-corona dem demonstrations with right-wing extremists under them and um, many other media, alternative media from before the left now turn towards this new um, yeah, popular theme of um, talking bad about the measures and talking um, about uh, and not problematizing the thing that um, not problematizing demonstrating together with Nazis, breaking the taboo uh, of demonstrating with Nazis. We try to do that uh, all the time. We try to stay a reliable source, authentic, bottom-up, um, showing what we are making. And even if some listeners do not understand how we could be have been critical of the government all the time before and now orientate ourselves um, to the government standards, but we try to be responsible. And I think that's also the... Um, and for that, we also have to stay in touch with each other. Have the community so we can talk, we can share our ideas, and to do this with, um, because it's I, if I think I'm right doesn't mean that I wouldn't think differently if I had someone else perspective and that's exact, exactly what community media wants bring as many perspectives as possible into the, the public discourse and so the problems and knowledge of minorities and weakened or excluded people do not fall behind and I believe that is the task that we have the task and the creativity to do this in all crisis situations. And this is where you have never come. This is the support that you have been able to, the moral support and the concrete advice that you have uh, been able to provide to your members. Yeah, and the um, what we learned from this crisis that it's yeah. really um, important to stay in touch with each other, talk with each other. Um, explain why we think this is right and why other think it's not right and have an eye on um, all this fake news that's out there. Right. Thank you very much. Uh, anyone who wants to uh, have a last uh, go on this question until we open the last uh, question of, the, of this day until and then afterwards uh, in about 10 minutes or so we will have questions uh, from the, the participants. Um, so, um, anyone who want to add? Can I add, just add yeah. a few words? Okay. Yes. Okay. So, I, I concentrate on the work as an association and mm -hmm. I think what we could do or what, was, what I felt was needed was uh, to, to give relatively fast information or try to help process what's happening, what's coming and, and how to to, to structure the work with the almost 3,000 volunteers to keep them and the, the, the paid team safe and to keep the media work going and, and facilitate the distancing process also in terms of broadcasting. Uh, we were working, uh, we are working for more money for quite some years and, and uh, 
happily we were able to to get like a corona of extra funding and 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 uh, bring two million more euros to the to the stations and also what was i think the what really was enjoyed by the stations was to 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 try to to get the access to the money as easy as possible as and as practical as possible in terms of of the the frameworks and i i think that was was the major thing that also made the people or in the stations happy and really helped for their challenging uh, uh, situation they are, were already in i think and also facilitate some some uh, bringing together programs so i i share in the chat a link where we as a, as a overall uh, organization try to or i try to to say let's have a, a hashtag so we can find the corona programs so I posted uh, one link on our new uh, uh, radio take where you can see also just one hashtag uh, and the programs that uh, are produced. Yeah. So you have support with content, moral support, information, and 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 funding. Yeah, and also and get your hands on the money fast and easy. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like a good way. Um, I'd like to open the, the final question before we uh, take answers with you, Helga, and then uh, some of those who um, have uh, talked um, longest ago. <laughs> um, uh, the, the, the question uh, is uh, related to the corona. Uh, um, I would like to know where, how you see the, 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 the sustainability of your sector. Um, uh, where, what are the most important next stepping stones to, um, faci to, to, to make available for the sector, for the stations, to, uh, to advance as a, as a strong, uh, for, for, for a stronger reality uh, with possibly on cont continually oncoming pandemics and things like this, but not only in view of that? Very clear question. Oh, wow. Um, um, let me, I think I have to go back to the political framework. We have been on the far right. Now we are on the green uh, side of things. Let me put it that way. We have some, we have a party in the government that understands uh, community media. That really helps a lot, you know. So when that is changing, everything can change. And also what, how, how we can, we see it with our neighbors. We are in touch with also Hungary. So we see little changes can ruin everything. So it's not all in our hand. But on the other hand, also building solidarity pacts in the civil society for these times uh, are important. And, and we did this under the right-wing government. Uh, the other thing is technological uh, uh, changes to facilitate the web thing, the media change, the usability change, and also the DAB Plus. We are not really going on this track, but also uh, keeping our foot in this traditional media framework uh, and, and not giving up on the, on the, on the broadcast. I think uh, I end with the word, word community because that is what the title is actually about. And I think we also need to cha challenge ourselves on what we really mean when we say community, also in terms of engagement of younger people, uh, uh, recognizing outlets like Facebook, like connecting via different uh, uh, frameworks. So I think we really need to think closely on what, what, kind of communities we build and how we do that. So thank I you, Helga. Thank you very much. Uh, Ragnar, do you want to have a brief word here on, on the, the, the way forward, the power and strength of the, of, of the, the, the sector? Yes, uh, I, I think that uh, one of the most important thing is that uh, the community radio could be uh, used at, uh, with crisis in, in the community. Uh, it could be a, a crisis uh, like pandemics, but it, uh, it could also be uh, if you have a great fire or something like that. Uh, and uh, 
uh, in, in Sweden, we had uh, uh, discussing with uh, uh, the authorities uh, at the national level that we can help uh, in, in just this type of crisis. Uh, so, so because we are local, uh, even the public service have uh, something to do in this. But, but uh, we are so local, uh, and um, that gives us uh, opportunities that we should use. So, as Helga said, the community is the answer <laughs> in, in, in yeah. these special times. Yeah. Thank you, Ragnar. We move. I would like to invite Isabel to share a reflection on. On, on these issues? Yes, I, I'd like to say actually that, um, well, the role of the network is, uh, has been very important in, in coping with the, with the COVID situation. And, and I think I, that will be also important in the next months because, yeah, as most of you know, the pandemic is, is not soft anyway. And uh, yeah, they, 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 they are you know it's very important now and, and in the next months uh, so uh first i would like to say that uh, the network uh, the rank uh, has played a role in connecting in helping and advising the the community radios in spain and uh, in a specific the the in, uh, advising in the technological uh, side so uh, it's very important for community radios and people and radio stations that they are not allowed to, to leave their homes and they need to work from homes to broadcast their programs from homes. So uh, sharing knowledge and providing the tools uh, and the options uh, for uh, in not just, uh, I think I'm thinking about, for example, providing a free software uh, options for broadcasting from home, from meeting, organizing this kind of meetings from home is very important. Uh, uh, and this technological knowledge is very, very important nowadays, and we need to go forward uh, in, in, in this uh, technological innovation. And also, uh, I think that it's very important as well to, to share the knowledge and to share the experience and to uh, organizing uh, radio activities for people, for different groups of people. And this, in this specific, um, fighting fake news, so as uh, some of our colleagues have mentioned before, it's very important for people, for the community to be well informed. And also it's very important to uh, uh, professionalize the community media in order to have the resources to inform and to be able to respond to the needs of the community and serve them better as a local media and fulfill the needs of independent and responsible information. Because responsible information is not a name of the commercial radius and the commercial media anymore, at least in Spain. Uh, from the rank, we, we organize a community radio program. So we produce and broadcast a community radio program at a national wide, uh, in, in, at a national project, uh, because we consider that was very interesting uh, as well to uh, have uh, all the perspectives of the regions and all the visions of the community media, uh, or the most of the community media involved in the rank and co-produce together uh, a program that all the media can broadcast on themselves in their different radios and so on. And yeah. this uh, community uh, and co-organization uh, of uh, radio broadcast and radio products is also, uh, it has been an experiment and we are looking forward to continue with this experiment in the next months. And it's something that has very uh, fulfilling for us as radio producers and as a network as well. That's really interesting. So you can say the, the National Association gets a new role and a new, um, a new extent into the, the, the way of supporting the stations. Uh, exactly. during the pandemic. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I know, Vasuki, that we are four minutes uh, into your time, but I would like to give Aquas the last word so, to round off this uh, space for the panelists. So, Aquas, the word is yours. Uh, unfortunately, in Hungary, since only 
three, four radios remained. So the whole sector was eliminated. We cannot really talk about a network of radios. We are more like uh, islands who are sending smoke signs to each other. But actually we have very good experiences at the radio, at CV radio. Uh, eventually I would say we could benefit from this situation. The community, as many of you mentioned, became much more stronger. And uh, after a few weeks when there was quite chaotic or confused, what should we do, how can we do, um, we had online meetings and uh, we tried to manage the problems, how to deal without the lack of the studio. Finally, we uh, discovered many online tools, which is more important to us now since we became an online radio. And we discovered a lot of things and uh, the people help to each other. And also the, the listeners, they just called us or write many uh, messages, how to deal with this, how to do that. So finally, we have quite positive experiences. And I know that uh, after the quarantine, when we met in person, that, that was a bit weird that <laughs> we are not online and, and how to go on. So this is our experiences. Thank you very much, Akos. And uh, with this, a uh, warm thank you from uh, my side, from my and Nico's side to all of the panelists. You will now be, um, be, um, uh, receive questions from, from the audience. Over to you, Vasuki. Yeah, um, thanks, Bridget, for the wonderful session. I also thank all the panelists for their insights on community media in their respective countries. Uh, there is a question by uh, Kanchan uh, to Helga. Uh, does the government recognize the strength of community media sector? How are the networks working towards making that pitch, particularly in countries where the political scenario is favorable? Um, thank you for the question. I think... First of all, I really need to, to, to stress that uh, also because the question is coming from India, uh, Austria is a very, very, very small country compared to, to many other countries and especially, for example, to India. So uh, it seems we are quite close to the government really in terms of, 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 of geographically and, and everything is tiny compared in terms of also the people who are involved. So I think it's it's... Even the ones who hate you uh, are easier to reach, uh, and and um, we, I think we have a, a quite strong standing as 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 the organization really challenged the state with its monopoly. So it's it's a long we have a long relationship, so to say, and 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 uh, we are somehow taken seriously. This is, is also due to, to people like Helmut Peisel, who was one of these uh, founding uh, uh, activists and people who have a very good reputation also as experts in their field, even if people disagree. And, and I think that, that it, it helps also that some of our ideas like participation and, and, and getting people involved are also s sustained by, by polls, by what people need, by what voters need. So I think maybe, I don't know if, if that answers the question in, in a way, but that would be my, my first thoughts. Okay, uh, thanks a lot. The second question is by me, any one of the panelists could uh, probably pitch in. How strong is volunteerism in the CR sector in your respective countries? I can say in Sweden, it's, it's very strong, very strong. Okay. Great. How, How many volunteers per station, uh, Ragnar, for example? Sorry, a bit was okay. <laughs> 10, 10 to, to 20. How about uh, France? No, uh, each radio uh, is very singular, very single, but we have between 20 to 200 uh, volunteers per radio. Oh. Over here, it's about 
the smallest, I would say, 40 to 450. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was yeah, I was sorry. No, I just wanted to say that in Hungary, it's quite the same that uh, we have more than 100 volunteers. Tilos Radio has about 200 volunteers. Uh, if you split up into sectorial volunteerism, I think the radio is quite attractive. So it's very different in case of uh, elderly homes or in other places. But in our sector, in the community media, still a lot of people come as volunteers. And it's very good now. We see that many youngsters are coming in the last couple of years, which is quite good. Uh, we know that has a question. Uh, uh, on the uh, issue of volunteerism, I just want to add uh, something from our perspective in South Asia. Uh, we often grapple with uh, this idea of volunteerism. If by volunteerism we mean unpaid work, uh, if community radio stations are working in poor and marginalized communities predominantly, and we expect the community to volunteer in that sense of unpaid work, it is often very challenging. Uh, I mean, they need to leave aside, uh, you know, wage labor, they need to leave aside paid work to be able to come and volunteer. So sometimes we wonder whether volunteerism uh, to the degree to which we find in some of the more developed countries is indeed a luxury for the poorer countries in Africa or, or South Asia and so on. I mean, that's just a comment. I mean, you can, you can reflect on it. But I had a question, uh, Bridget, if it is okay. Uh, this is a question to, uh, a, a response to something that uh, Nicholas uh, said during his presentation, something very intriguing. I mean, uh, he, he said uh, with uh, DAB, it's not possible to be autonomous any longer. Uh, those of us who are at the lower end of digitalization here in India and many other parts of the world, uh, I'm really curious about the response to digitalization uh, in your countries. Uh, and, and why is it that it is difficult to be autonomous with uh, digitalization? Uh, I think you you questioned me about this, right? Yeah. Uh, I don't know what is the situation in in, in other countries, um, but the technology of DAB Plus uh, took time to 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 be displayed in France, and it's still it's still uh, on its way. It's not totally finished. Um, it can be. As many technologies or no normalization, uh, it has good and bad uh, features. Uh, for example, one good features for the audience is uh, no in Paris you have uh, or in any in any towns you have uh, two or three times more stations. So that's the opportunity for new community radio to to be created or to develop or to be authorized, etc. On the other side, um, you have. The problem is that today the audience is not uh, do not uh, have an equipment. Uh, I mean, the receivers. Most of the people know are on their smartphones, and the smartphones. That's an issue. We should fight to to make the the smartphones uh, producer um, putting the DAB plus uh, uh, chipset in it. Otherwise, I don't know what will happen in the next years uh, for many things. Why is it difficult to be autonomous? Um, in France, the multiplex, which is the, the difference with the, the FM, Mitem UKB, the difference is uh, that you, you put more stations on, on, a, on a frequency. It's a bit schematic. Uh, instead of having a radio on 88.2 and another radio on 88.4, etc., you have a 10 to 13 radio on uh, 194 yeah. until 195 megahertz. Okay. 
that's the technology that have been decided to put multiplex uh, as a, a new step in the broadcast. Uh, then uh, the national authority, the French national authority decided to, for many reasons, to, to create a, this, a new entity, which is this multiplex, as a commercial, under commercial uh, law statue. I don't know, statue, um, statue. it must be a company. Even if you're not going to do profits and benefits, etc., it, it cannot be a, like we have in France, a, a, a non-profit statue, uh, non-profit organization. It must be a commercial. The reason may be historical, but I'm not quite uh, convinced about this. So uh, we all feared one thing that, uh, because now we have a multiplex, for example, in Mulhouse, with 13 radios that had been authorized, new radios, all the radios, that's a strategy of the national authority to put more already existing FM radios, that could be criticized. But then you have very different type of radio under the same uh, multiplex, commercial, non-commercial. So we were fearing this. But already in Marseille, south, south, south of France, they did the job of doing a, 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 an, an auto, an, autonomous and independent initiative. They are only non-profit radios in the multiplex in Marseille, but they created a, a commercial structure which associated all the radios and they put investment on the table with another company, etc. But with a non-profit organization. And in Mulhouse, we had another case of a, was another case, we had commercial radio authorized under the same multiplex. And we, we proved them that we, we were not there was no reason to pay every month ad vitam aeternam to a uh, commercial broadcaster that we can invest by ourselves. As many of you radio does do uh, with the FM. I guess uh, I know that many radios have the, the antenna on the roof and broadcast. But in, in DAB, that's a, a point very strange. It must be more radio, so you have to organize this. And we proved that uh, each radio invests and pay a, a, month, a monthly fee to pay electricity, etc. And we prove that it's very, very low uh, price. The national commercial, the ex-national commercial company that broadcasts for uh, as commercials uh, company are ten times uh, more expensive. Great. Thanks a lot, uh, Nicholas. Uh, Ursula has a question for Isabel. How many community radio licenses do you have in Spain? As I understood, most of the CA community media stations do not have community radio licenses. Are they pirate or do they have commercial licenses? <laughs> well, it's a really good question, actually. I like to say that, uh, thank you for the question, Ursula. In Spain, there are zero community radio licenses. Actually, there are three radios that they have uh, a license, but they have a commercial license. But uh, I have to say that community radio are not pirate because they have not profit aims. They are not profit. So they have no license, but most of the commercial radios in Spain have not a license as well. So the government usually keeps the status quo, decide to keep the status quo and respect that such a legal situation. However, sometimes um, it happens that uh, the regional government or the national government decide to close some or to, to, to any state, any legal um, uh, action against uh, some community radio. That was the, the case of Quack FM. That's the radio I belong, as I mentioned before. But uh, I have to say that most of the radio had no issues uh, or legal issues. Uh, so far, so that because uh, if you try to close the mm, community radios, you need also to close the commercial radios that they don't have a license, and you start uh, you know legal issue, and it's not very good for you as a government to close a community or to close uh, regular commercial media. It's not a very good. Uh, you know, <laughs> it's not very good for you. So most of the governments decide not to do anything. But uh, yeah, finally, zero commercial, zero 
community license. It's a pity. Thanks, Isabel. Uh, there is a question on Facebook by Masoodul Hassan, I'm guessing from Pakistan. What is your suggestion for those countries? I, I'll pass this question on to Bridget and she can decide who can answer this question. Uh, what is your suggestion for those countries who do not have community radios on the basis of your experiences? Should community radios be introduced in their countries or not? <laughs> Thank you, Vasuki. And of course, this question is asked because in Pakistan, they have been, um, I've been discussing that a lot with you, Masood. Uh, hello. Um, uh, they've been discussing a lot uh, what to do, uh, how to get the space, uh, how to, and it's, uh, I would say personally, it's always a question of the risk of lives and, you know, what, 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 what is possible and can you do it in other ways? And that question I would actually like to open to anyone who'd like to, to um, chip in. I don't have a, a selected candidate. Any reflections on to help Masood turn the dream of a, the community media network they have into something actual and not just a dream? Uh, can, I, can I say something, Bajit? Uh, yes, and then uh, uh, Helga, it looked like you were getting ready, so what, uh, what would you recommend? <laughs> no, you know. I mean, uh, to, to Masood Bhai, I mean, it's very difficult to, you know, uh, dole out advice, uh, you know, with, with the kind of difficult circumstances in which uh, some civil society organizations and others work in many countries, uh, including in Pakistan. but. One of the ways in which people try to circumvent an immediate restrictive regulatory environment for community media is to, uh, for example, start educational radios, uh, to, to create some space on campuses, uh, which, you know, uh, doesn't right away look like, you know, it's resistance radio or, you know, it's, it's uh, waving a red flag or something. I mean, you could think of it as a radio for young people, for education and whatever, just to get a foot in the door and, and see if uh, that landscape can be expanded slowly. I mean, one needs to be careful about this, uh, knowing how risky uh, this proposition is in, uh, in the context of Pakistan or other countries in similar situations. Uh, thanks, thanks, Vinod. Uh, so, sorry, sorry, uh, Helga. Did you have something? Well, I'm. I, I just thought. I think it's it's already said with Nino's comments. Mm. Okay. Thanks. So, uh, shall I move on to the next question then? Okay. Kanchan has a question. Uh, in Germany. Could you reflect on the situation of participation of women in free radios? Yes. Um, I have the feeling we are in Germany have, um, I think, mostly the um, same, uh, same amount of women as men. Or we have this big program every year with uh, female voices um, or to the Women's Fighting Day, or what's 8th of March called? Um, at our radio station, we have a um, whole month dedicated to feminism in different topics and different programs. So that the music is just about um, women or played by women and many powerful women. But we have this problem with volunteers. We talked before. It's um, price of living is getting higher in the big cities and studying with, <coughs> studying with Bologna reform made it um, nearly impossible for young students to come to us and work with us. So it's um, this age separation. But we have a lot of um, older women who have time on they can work with us. The younger ones um, are there for one, two years and then um, go on working. It's the same with men, actually. 
Bridget, can I ask a question? Oh, oh sorry, Michael, go ahead. Sorry to, to uh, bring my voice in here as this is a bit of road switch, but um, Fabian, I, I, I don't agree. <laughs> yes. I think there's a, there's, this is a really a big issue in Germany because um, I can speak for some radios I know and there is uh, the majority is male. So uh, there's really a, a, a small number of female radio makers who are really uh, the the complete producing uh, process is in female hands. So that's, that's something that's, I, I think, to be found in, in, in many stations in Germany, that there's quite a, a difference in the numbers, in the figures. Okay. Uh, and and what's, been, what's, what's needed here is the, on, on one hand, the sensitivity for this, to, to really detect this as a problematic situation that uh, the half of the population is not uh, represented in a radio. And on the other hand, it needs campaigning because uh, you have to, um, I try, uh, to de try to detect what, what the reasons for this barrier is. And sometimes it's, it's behavior, sometimes it's very practical issues, like Fabian, you said, with the uh, question of who's studying and, and under what, what conditions. So this is something which is really a challenge for the community radio stations that I know in Germany that are, are really, let's say, struggling with this equality to have really a balanced uh, gender in, in, in their radios. I'm not talking about the whole um, uh, gender issue all in all. It's, it's really this, this female male question first. And, and, and there's really something to do from my point of view, but Fabian, perhaps it's in, a, a in, in Munich in your radio station is completely opposite. So. Yeah, um, and if I remember correctly, it, the women that are active are really active on the congress uh, or um, community that's the only one time i see um, other people from other uh, uh, with no permission uh, which of the participants on this panel feel that their countries pose the highest number of restrictions on community media. I didn't get the question really. Uh, highest number? Oh, okay. Uh, in, in terms of restrictions, <gasps> which country, does your country impose a lot of restrictions on community media? Well, actually, Akos has the word here because this is yeah. why... <laughs> This is why you had to go off uh, FM because of definitely all Hungary is the winner here. <laughs> um, you mean what, what limitations or how? Um, yeah, actually, in Hungary in 2010, when this new uh, media law came to power, um, there are quotas meaning that they regulated how much music, how much Hungarian music, how much public service, how much uh, news for minorities we have to broadcast. And uh, this is not the way how the community medium or how a community radio works. It, it is less structured. And anyway, it was always quite vague what public service mean according to the law. And uh, it turned out during the monitors when they evaluated and listened to our emission that when we are talking in a studio about a certain topic, they said it's not public service content because, uh, okay, you are talking about education, you are talking about society questions in general, but uh, this is not something that should have been conveyed and broadcasted to the people. And it turned out that the public service content is something that comes from the government and actually the statements of the government. So when we read those news or statements that cannot be, that can be considered as uh, public service, if we only talking in the studio, really important questions. And this is the way we operate. We let the people tell their own experiences. And I think this is the essence of community media. And they said, this is not in accordance with the law. 
So these restrictions led to the elimination of, uh, of the community media sector, actually. I don't know if, if that was the answer to your question, but uh, with such regulations, you can control and you can censor uh, a medium, especially a community media. Nicola? I think in France, I would say we, we are not to, to be p-tied. Uh, we have not, no really problem, no restriction, because the, the, the media landscape and the media regulation is uh, backed to the law. So for sure, you're, uh, it's forbidden to say bad words, to, to be violent, to make the promotion of drugs and, and sexism and so, such things. This is nothing different than the law. But an issue is uh, today, for example, the, 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 the regulation of the sector uh, was created in the 80s. And today, uh, we have a lot of what we call uh, proximity medias that are not um, authorized by the audiovisual authority. They are only on the web. Um, I say the web, not the internet. And the web is under the power of uh, multinationals, industries. And it would be a good idea, for example, in France, that we put under the law that authorized the, 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 the radios, uh, the frequency radio, etc. also to put such kind of um, proximity media, web media that really do, do a good job. And I would say uh, maybe another problem I see that helps me to go to another subject, but I think there's a very, very important issue. Someone said before, we have, for example, in Europe, no common uh, regulation. This could be an issue. We should really fix, for example, the internet. This weekend, you, maybe you saw the crash of a, uh, an internet uh, access provider in America that had consequence in all the world. This is the web and uh, what, everything that is on the web, we say we can broadcast from home, but this is uh, under the, the, the power of the, the GAFA, what we call the GAFA, Google, Amazon, Facebook, etc. And it's not a, a common space as we know it in under FM, UKV, etc. So the infrastructure could be an issue to think about. We should think about the infrastructure, why Europe has no policy to to put a neutral internet network on the, on, the, on the side of the commercials. So we also maybe have to think about our, how we bring our signal to the antenna. And I think this is, a, in my opinion, this is a challenge for the next years. Otherwise, everything will be under the web because the uses and the consumption, the mass consumption goes to the web. Sibyl, do you want to comment on this? Yes, I was reflecting on that because uh, the COVID situation uh, shows us that uh, many people uh, decide in, when they stayed at home, they decide to listen to the radio uh, and not uh, and try to avoid in being informed by the website or get into the radio in order to contrast the information. So yeah, it's, in, it's very interesting uh, that you mentioned about the the future uh, and the current importance of internet and getting a natural internet net network, but also they, we need to defend our right to to stay in the FM because in Spain some public administrations okay. are telling us they told us that uh, why are you fighting for the uh, space uh, for the FM go to the internet because everybody is in the, in the internet and so on no. No, no, most uh, the audience and the commercial radios they are fighting to stay in the FM and and we need to stay there because we need to to be a, a an independent source of information for people uh, and that's very important and in terms of the the, the risks and challenges in Spain I would say also that uh, as I mentioned the lack of security and the institutional prosecution of community media but also uh, the media suffers from insufficient uh, economic and human resources. So most of the community media uh, have a budget of seven or eight uh, thousand euros per year, which is very, very low. Uh, with some exceptions, uh, most of the community media uh, does not receive public funding uh, for the exercise of the radio activity. 
and this also uh, a challenge uh, in, in terms of they they find uh, organizing different uh, activities, uh, parties, uh, educational training, uh, training, radio trainings, and so on. But in terms of the COVID, if you are not allowed to conduct any of these activities, maybe you are uh, condemned to to close your activities. So yeah, the, most of them are are uh, in lack of uh, human and um, financial resources. And also, uh, we they they suffer from insufficient. Uh, we we have insufficient political support, and it's very important to to gain more support uh, because uh, we learn from the Hungary case that if one uh, political party, a specific political party, reaches to the to the to the to the government, uh, everything can change, and all the uh, small steps that we have done. Uh, can disappear just because the law the, the law changed. So we need to uh, do a more uh, success uh, political lobby in, in social uh, gain in social acknowledgement and, and social support. Uh, as as far as I as I say. Okay. Thank you, Sir. Richard, over to you. So good that you asked for the next sorry, that's sorry, question. Sorry. Oh, it, it's back to you, Bajit. Okay, thank you very much. So um, we have uh, two more uh, elements on the, um, on the uh, program today. And thank you very much to um, Hyderabad for providing us with a little bit more space and time so we can wrap up. Uh, and I'd like to pass a word to my co-moderator um, co and... and Michael um, Nikolai, Nico, uh, among friends, uh, to uh, provide some summary comments. And then uh, afterwards, we will uh, give the word to the panelists before we close. Nico. Yes, easy task, as you uh, can imagine, uh, after almost two hours of talking, uh, to give <laughs> a summary of, of the uh, things said. I'd, I'd, I'd like to uh, go back to some of your statements uh, each of the uh, participants uh, made, which are, I think, uh, drawing a nice picture of the European um, community radio landscape, because this happened during this talk, that we have really one of the, let's say, strongest spots in Europe for community radio, as we have with, with Austria, as we g got to know, even giving uh, corona funding, funds to the community radio sector, to the weakest part of Europe where a vivid uh, community landscape was existing uh, until Viktor Orban won the election in 2010 in Hungary. And in between these range, we have everything else um, he gathered in this discussion in a way. Uh, what we've learned today, I think, is that the recognition of the government has two layers, I would say. If you got a good recognition from the government, you got a political support, you got perhaps uh, financial support from state fees or uh, broadcast fees like in Germany, then you got something that give you a sustainability for your media, but this can turn. And then you got uh, at, in the worst case, like in Hungary, uh, the government as your enemy. And that will lead you to uh, a situation civil radio and Tilos are facing while even the sympathetic anarchy uh, situation of Spain uh, gives us an idea, if this recognition is turning into something like ignorance, then even if you have a landscape that's, which is really diverse, like a lot of community radios are existing, but not on a legal status. So it's perhaps a, a funny, funny side of the, the story, but it's as weak as we can see, uh, as Quark FM was fought by law in a way to disappear from this even anarchic situation. So this, let's say, uh, support via recognition and uh, prevent ignorance or fight ignorance of uh, the decision makers and governments or authorities leads us to a very diverse stability of the um, organizations 
even the federations or on the uh, radios on the ground. And uh, the tasks are existing on many layers that we had, uh, as we had in our discussion. So there's the, the question of which way is to, to be chosen for the future regarding the question, how long will FM exist? Um, in Germany, there's a final date for closing down FM, for instance, and the question uh, is not answered like in Austria, where they are like laid back and say, dear B plus, who cares? Um, it, in Germany, it's very concrete to say it will have an end. And uh, what we, even through the lines of the participants of the discussion had was something like the most important thing is not the technology itself. It's rather the demand of having the right to broadcast on the mass media stream, whatever it is. If it's an internet stream, which is perhaps a public sphere protected for public value issues and not for economic issues, then it's the same for us if we could be there and use this to broadcast as the whole sector would be get a guarantee to always have access to the mass media, whatever technology it has. Uh, one issue is, and it was Ragnar pointing on the question of what is social media or so social media in comparison to um, community media. And I think, uh, as Ragnar said, it is a competitor. We are comp in competition. Uh, Helga says, perhaps it's not a competition. It's a question of how to implement it. And even uh, others said that it could be a chance to just enlarge the sector in a way uh, by using social media and traditional FM media or whatever way it will take. So um, the question is perhaps an answer could lie in the, the heart of community radio or community media. It's the we against the singularity of uh, one person is doing its his or her channel thing. His question of si thinking about a media not creating only a conversation stream, which is kind of uh, by one to many people. So community radio is in kind of opposite to Brecht, many to many. So this is uh, one of the tasks, even for the future to think about this. Um, I tried to get a bit into it and uh, it was Nicola pointing on the fact and it came from others from uh, Akos, for instance, that uh, we have to think about uh, how to lower barriers, not only in gender issues, but in age issues. So how to get people into our organizations that are youngsters, that are really young and perhaps really far away from any thought of radio because perhaps they don't even know this kind of media anymore. And uh, on the other hand, how to get uh, this radios, our organizations open even to elderly people. And uh, one of the, let's say, um, uh, then the need of focusing on what is community, as Helga was asking, uh, was uh, pushed by the corona situation, the pandemic situation. And, and I think out of this discussion came a strengthens of our sector, not that uh, it was a, a huge situation of danger for us, but it was the time to find really ways to revitalize perhaps uh, the connection to our members, to our radio makers, to broadcasters, to find new ways to share knowledge, to share tools. Uh, all these was kind of reactivating perhaps uh, rather than um, yeah, pushing us down in, in our sector. So perhaps Corona is not only the deadly thing, it's a revitalization thing for organizations like ours when it's about community. So uh, listening to familiar voices was something that, uh, for instance, Fabian was pointing on as a really important thing on radio and even of, on, on community radio. And I think the last touched issue by Nicola was something that we all have to keep in mind by uh, being really um, stressed and exhausted by keeping our organizations and radio stations alive is that there will be the next step. And this is the question of who will own uh, the channels uh, in 10 years when it's not about FM or any, when everything is, will be in a kind of internet, however it looks like then. And um, I like to point on some uh, initiatives here um, in Germany in um, collaboration with Austria, 
with Switzerland and other countries, as far as I know, the public service and uh, technology centers are already trying to create something that they call it European public digital sphere. And what's missing in this discussion uh, that we were reflecting in the last months on in a little, let's say, um, group with Austria, Switzerland and Germany was that missing is the community aspect in this whole thing. So there, they are on a good way by uh, pointing on the lack of uh, that that was that Nicolas was pointing on that there's this kind of commercial environment only uh, that the public uh, value aspect has to be mirrored by a con concrete infrastructure but they are missing community media in this discussion until now from my point of view and from the, my knowledge so the, I think this is a task which comes in addition to the things we already all are doing to keep our organizations surviving and important that we try to have to get our foot into this open door to come in an let's say triple sector discussion to demand an european yeah let's say digital public sphere so i i i, I hope i kind of get everything but at least you all got the chance to add or to highlight things that i made missed thank you Thank you, Nico. Um, who'd like to go first uh, in the, the final word? Uh, I see Akos, so I just give the word to you, Akos. Well, I don't want to be too pathetic or emotional, but, um, but <laughs> you know, many times I ask myself that, uh, why do I do this? Why do we do this? And uh, why do we struggle? Is it worth and uh, such discussions and conversations give me the answer that yes, it, it, it really works. And I think that community media is a great invention. It's a great creation because it brings people together with very, very different background. Mm -hmm. And uh, today is such an illustration for that as well. So I cannot say anything else, just thank you. It was an honor to be invited. And uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Akos. Um, Fabien? Yes, um, yeah, it's great to hear all of about community media and uh, where it's heading and how it's working everywhere. Um, and I'd like to point out community radio is also the community with the listeners and um, we, it's good that we make live program and not only on demand and not only podcasts so that the listeners can call in and be part of that community. And that's great to have and to connect with each other. And it's great that it's everywhere in Europe. Thank you, Fabien. Do we move on to Isabel? Yeah, I only want to say that radio for me and for much of us, I think that is patient and is still patient survives and we retain our emotion to broadcasting live, of course, <laughs> broadcasting. I think that community radio will remain. Maybe we don't have the support for, politi for politicians or even we need to struggle with many um, barriers and issues, but I think that we will uh, stay there and uh, one example is the case of Austria uh, or sorry the, of Hungary okay maybe we have a lot of uh, political issues here but uh, we, we we maintain with faith and we maintain our patience and I think that it's very important to transmit to young people and also to to a diverse, diverse of a diversity of um, social groups that they can uh, join community media, they can feel free uh, of uh, say everything they really want to say and also they can um, enjoy because uh, if you enjoy, you will keep moving forward and you keep work and you keep fighting against this, this um, social issues, I think. So yeah, I think that uh, long life to community media. <laughs> Thank you, Isabel, very much. Uh, I'd like to give the word to uh, Nicola. 
Uh, thank you for, uh, for inviting me. We are not a representative of all the community radios in France, but the students' radio are really great places for com as community radio. It's open, and I think this is one of our, our challenges. That's our singularity that will also make uh, that the community media will be part of the future. If, if we are open, if we stand for what we, on what we believe, that will make an alternative to the rational future the, the business is trying to do uh, for us. So if we stand on our values, on, our, on what we believe, if we give the, the, the voice to the, the minority, to the, the alternative, this, this, the challenge will be done. But I guess as the, in the past, people will always have to struggle to, to make things a living. But that's the, that's the history, so go on. Thank you very much. Helga? Um, thank you for the invitation. Um, I, I think Nico did a great summary and I would like to take up the, the, the values and the media. Uh, when he asks who will own the, the community media in 10 years from now, I think we don't know really which media this will be in terms of, of, of technical structure, but we I would like to ask, or for myself, it was more like who will who will hold up the values, or who will like be a, a, a guide of of these principles, and also of the idea that we are uh, many uh, creating media. I also want to th say thank you for for also the the disruption, or especially Nico and Nikolai uh, addressed the. The, the, the overhang of maybe white male men in community media, I think also questioning us and ourselves uh, in terms of structure is, is very necessary for, the, for our livelihood. And so, and also the restrictions can come in very different ways. In Austria, we lost every funding, 2000, we got it back, we lost it almost again. So I think uh, uh, life is always ups and downs, so we keep on going anyway. Thank you very much, Helga. Uh, Ragnar, is it last word to you? <laughs> yes, uh, I think uh, two things. Um, community media has uh, freedom of, exp uh, of expression, not just for journalists, but for ordinary people in society and community, and that is important. And the other things is that uh, community media has many years of experience in capturing and training ordinary people in making radio and television. We must use these skills wisely in the future. Thank you. That was an important note to end on. Thank you, Ragnar. Thank you, everyone. Um, the next, uh, the part two of this uh, process um will be uh, led by nico i will do the summary and we will uh, go to visit a station in luxembourg one in bosnia herzegovina one in uh, halle germany uh, women's radio from oslo uh, radio rachel in norway we will be visiting a finnish radio and uh, we hope to get everything in place with a uh, radio station in southern italy working with uh, immigrants and refugees uh, regeneration radio so uh, stay tuned the 17th of September and it's great to see that uh, I mean those of us who work with radio for a lifetime it's all again about giving voice it's about trust credibility about community about feeling free and having freedom and having to struggle for it so though handing over to uh, Vinod thank you warmly everyone thank you so much uh, Helga um, now, after Nicole's uh, great summary and uh, uh, analysis of the discussion, I don't want to attempt to do another summary. In fact, I was joking that uh, Nico has set up the stage for one more dialogue. Uh, we, we could have gone on for a couple of hours more. Uh, each and every dialogue, we keep saying it is a 90-minute dialogue. Maximum, it will go up to two hours, but I should... <laughs> But I should confess that we have not been able to stop at two hours, at least for the last four or five dialogues. It's, it's, uh, but 
uh, it was a fantastic uh, discussion, uh, very educative. Uh, it highlighted so many important issues. So let me uh, thank all the panelists, uh, Isabel, uh, Ragnar, Fabian, Helga, Akos, uh, all of you, I mean, Nicholas, so many interesting issues uh, that you have flagged and uh, we could pursue them. Bridget already laid the ground for uh, the second dialogue, uh, part two of this two-part uh, European dialogue. If uh, today we got a bird's eye view uh, from the point of view of networks and associations, in the next dialogue, uh, we'll get closer to the ground and get perspectives of uh, community broadcasters uh, who are working day in and out uh, in their stations. So I hope all of you will uh, join us again on the 17th with uh, new people we'll be meeting. And I should also flag uh, my own uh, promo for these dialogues. Uh, after the second uh, European dialogue, we are hoping to go to North America uh, with Canada and the US. And uh, finally to uh, South and Latin America when in many ways it all began. Yeah, so we are sort of ending with where, where things started off in community radio and community media globally. So thank you everyone. Uh, good evening and, and good night. Yeah. Thanks uh, Nico and uh, Bridget for a great job. We'll uh, meet again uh, on the 17th. Good night. We will. Thank you very much. Thank you everyone. Thank you panelists. Thank you participants. Thank you uh, Hyderabad. <laughs> <laughs>